Would you believe me if I told you that I edited this promo in Final Cut Pro in less than 60 seconds? While there was some initial legwork to create my own editing template, once that was done, I was able to edit this promo in less than 60 seconds, 57 to be exact. Later in this video, I'll show you in real time how I did it. So you can start by using an old project or you can create one from scratch. I'm going to take this completed real estate promo video and turn that into a template. In order to make a template from an existing edit, there are four different scenarios that you'll face. Let's start with the easiest of them. If a clip has no transitions on either end of the clip, there are no speed ramps and it's just a simple cut from one clip to another, then you can simply select the clip and hit Alt G to create a compound clip. To keep things organized, give the compound clips a name. I like numbering the clips, so I'll call this shot eight since it's the eighth shot in the sequence. The goal is to replace each of these shots with compound clips that have the same duration as the source clip. Clips with transitions are a little bit more complicated because there's extra media before or after the cut point that needs to be included in that compound clip. Let's hold down Alt or Option and click and drag to create a copy of this clip. I'll let it snap to the end point of the clip and you'll notice that the shot technically starts right here in the middle of the transition. But the transition needs extra media to transition from one clip to the other. So if I drag this cut point to the left, you'll see that the clip actually starts over here where the transition starts. So you'll want this whole duration to be contained in the compound clip. I'll select the clip and hit Alt G to create a compound clip. This one will be called shot six. Then you'll need to trim this compound clip back to the middle of the transition. If I open it up, you'll see that this range is technically the visible range, but this darkened area up front is what's needed for the transition. I'll go back to the timeline and I'll drop this new compound clip onto the primary storyline. Because of the magnetic timeline, the whole edit will move up, so I'll need to remove this clip. I have my light leak attached to the first clip though, so first I'll move that back into position and then delete this clip. The third scenario is with speed ramp clips, and these are the most complicated compound clips that you'll create because it involves recreating the speed ramp from scratch. This is where the real reverse engineering comes in, but it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. I'll select this shot over here and I'll hit Command R to show the retime editor. You can see I have a speed ramp at the beginning and the end of the clip. I'll hold down Alt and click and drag to create two copies of the clip. With the top two clips selected, I'll hit Command R to show the retime editor again. I'm going to use this middle clip as a timing reference, so I'll drag the cut points all the way out on both ends on both clips. This clip was reversed, so remember that and hit Command Alt R to reset the speed of the clip. You can also find that in your Retime Options drop down menu over here. Then I'll hit Alt G to create a compound clip. This is shot three. Now let's recreate the speed ramp by first reversing the clip. Then using the shortcut Shift B, I can create two speed edits in the clip. The beginning and the end were both sped up by 20 times speed. So I'll go ahead and do that on both ends. You can double click on each speed cut and hit edit to adjust the source frame. Adjust the handles on the speed transition as well until you have the speed ramp on this compound clip matching up with the reference clip over here. When that's done, you can trim the compound clip back to the length of the original clip. If there are no transitions to worry about, simply hit Command Alt and the down arrow to write the compound clip to the primary storyline, effectively replacing the clip on the storyline. Lastly, you can also create compound clips for your graphics and music, like this animation that gives us information about the property and the music this original video was edited to. You don't need to do this, but it does make replacing all of the shots, assets and information easier when using the template on future edits. You can change the volume and add a fade out to the music compound clip as well. What I also like to do is open up each compound clip and create a basic title using the shortcut Control T. I'll make sure that the duration of the title matches the duration of the shot, and then I'll add text in there to match the compound clip number. So in this case, shot number three. Making the template user-friendly. Now you can go ahead and create compound clips for each shot like I just showed you, 
and you should be left with an edit that looks like this. Now, there are a bunch of other adjustment layers and overlays here, which I'll break down in just a minute. But first, I want to give you a few other tips on how to make this template as user-friendly as possible for when it's used on future projects. First, you'll want to copy some sort of audio clip, it can be anything, and paste it into each compound clip. When you go back to your timeline, you can select all the compound clips and hit Ctrl Shift S to separate the audio and then delete it. By doing this, you don't have to worry about removing audio in future. You can simply drop your clip into the compound clip with or without audio without having to worry about it. Once you've done that, you can go back into each compound clip and delete the audio. The other thing I like to do is head over to the Smart Collections in the browser window where you can right click to make a new Smart Collection. Let's call it Placeholders. Then double click on it and click on the plus icon to add a filter. I'll select type and make sure it's set to is a compound clip. And then I'll close that. Now, when you have the placeholder smart collection selected, it will show all the compound clips that need editing. Let's create another smart collection and we can call that clips. And this time we're going to add four properties here. We want to make sure that the type is not a project. The type is also not a compound clip. The media type is not audio only and the media type is also not stills. This will leave video only files and video files with audio. This is going to be where our footage appears when we use the template. The last tip is to remove any footage on the timeline and the browser window that are not needed in this template. So in other words, all the shots you used in the original edit. If you have overlays or light leaks or anything like that, those can stay. Now save that template somewhere handy. Let's assume you have a new project to work on. You can simply copy the Final Cut Pro library file and rename it. In this case, I'll just call it 1207 Mountain Road and I'll copy that text and open up the library. I might rename my timeline and if I open it up, I can double click on any compound clip to start replacing information and footage. Let's update this graphic and adjust the width of this bar over here. And then I can go back to the timeline where you can see it's been updated. Let's go ahead and replace all the shots real quick. You can open up each of these compound clips one by one and drag and drop your footage from the browser window into the compound clip. But there is an even faster way to do it. I'll head over to the smart collection I created for placeholders and I'll double click on shot 16 and hit the up arrow to make sure my playhead is at the beginning of the compound clip. Then I'll repeat this for shot 15 and the rest of the shots until I get all the way back to shot 1. This might seem strange, but it'll all make sense in just a second, because we're going to use two very efficient shortcuts to drop our footage in super fast. So let's drag the footage from Finder into my event, and I can head over to my Clips Smart Collection to see all of my footage. I'll select the first clip and hit Q to connect the clip to my primary storyline at the playhead. This is why it was important to make sure the playhead was at the beginning of every compound clip. Then I'll hit Command right square bracket to go to the next compound clip, and I'll hit Q again. I'll repeat this process until I've added all 16 shots. You can also just hit the next arrow here, but the shortcut is much faster. I'll finish adding the last few shots to each compound clip using the Q and Command right square bracket shortcut keys, and then you want to make sure that each shot is as long as the title placeholder we have inside the compound clip. If not, you can swap the footage out or select the clip and hit Command R to open the Retime Editor and slow the clip down to this duration. Since this wasn't shot at a higher frame rate, I'll head over to the Retime options and under Video Quality, I'll select Optical Flow so that Final Cut Pro can generate new frames for this clip. I'll go back to my timeline and there's my edit. Before I play it back, let me quickly break down what all of these overlays and effects are doing. At the top, I have these two adjustment layers. On the base grade layer, I have a color curves adjustment to adjust the brightness and contrast of the edit. I also have a color wheels adjustment to boost the saturation. On the LUT adjustment layer, I have my fire and ice LUT applied at 50%. The rest of these adjustment layers are effects and movements that are animated using keyframes. On the zoom in layer, for example, I have keyframe the scale to increase over time. On the glitch flash layer, I have a film grain and bad TV effect where the amount is keyframed from zero to a higher value in the middle and then back down to zero. There is also a zoom out effect, a bunch of other zooms and flashes, this one over here that zooms in and rotates clockwise by keyframing the scale and rotation parameters. If you find that a particular shot is too light or dark, you can simply adjust it by adding a color wheels or color curves adjustment directly onto the compound clip. 
These things are all done using adjustment layers. And if you don't have one, you can download my free adjustment layer for Final Cut Pro. I'll link to that down below. If you don't want to make your own template, then you can get a free editing template for Final Cut Pro if you watch this video next. So go ahead and watch it right now.